What we have so far is a sentence generator. Well, it actually it generates syntax trees from a root symbol. But those trees each correspond to a sentence if the root symbol we use is s. But that's not what we said we wanted. We said we wanted a parser, which takes in a particular sentence and gives us the syntactic structure. It turns out that parsers and sentence generators are almost the same. So what we'd like to do now is enumerate all the possible syntax trees corresponding to a sentence. We'll do it by expanding all tags recursively, just like we did before. But we'll force that the words of the tree that's generated match the input words. So I'll say in advance, I want to parse buffalo, 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 buffalo as a sentence. I'm going to call expand on s, but I'll keep track of two additional pieces of information. What's the beginning and what's the end of the sentence that I'm expanding? In the code, we'll keep track of these positions using index numbers. So a span from 0 to 4 concludes all four of these words. But a span from 0 to 2 would include only buffalo and buffalo. Now, when we expand s, we'll get np and vp. In addition, we're going to decide which parts of the sentence constitute that noun phrase and that verb phrase. So we'll pick a split point of where the noun phrase ends and the verb phrase begins, in this case at index 1, which corresponds to a structure where the noun phrase subject is just the first word and the verb phrase spans the next three words. Then we recursively expand all of these tags. So the noun phrase becomes a noun, which is buffalo. Now here's where this constraint happens. Anytime we generate a leaf, we have to make sure that the leaf has the right tag and has the right word. So we look at the word that was in the input between 0 and 1 and make sure that we only use leaves that have that word. In this way, we force ourselves to only build trees, syntax trees, that have the right words at the leaves. OK, we also have to recursively expand the VP and the output of that entire process will be the following subtree where we've made sure that the verb buffalo is, exists as a leaf, we use an adjective and a noun, and that we've covered everything from 1 to 4, or all three of these buffaloes. So we get a valid syntactic structure. Now this is not the only valid syntactic structure for this sentence. We could have picked a different split point, in which case we would have had a noun phrase spanning both buffaloes at the beginning and a verb phrase that's just buffalo buffalo. In order to complete this syntax tree, we can find leaves adjective and noun and leaves verb and noun with the internal structure of a noun phrase here. So those are two different syntax trees for the same input sentence. But notice we didn't get any trees for a sentence with five words or only three words. OK, let's write the code that does this. So as I said, the process of parsing is very similar to sentence expansion. We're still going to expand tags. But we'll do that in the process of parsing a whole line of text. A line consists of words, which we can get by just splitting on spaces. And then expand, expand all, and the printing at the end will all happen as part of this function. So I indent them all. Now the main change is that instead of just expanding a tag, we're going to expand a tag over a start and end point. If the start and the end point are only one apart, that means that it's a single word we're expanding. So if n minus start equals 1, then we should get the word that's at index start, which is the word that we need to match the leaf that we're interested in. Then when we go through the entire lexicon, we check to make sure that the tag is right and that the word matches the leaf's word. In that case, we should yield the leaf. Now what about the tag in the grammar? Well, we still want to go through 
all of the different expansions. But when we expand all, we'll expand them all over the span that starts at start and ends at end. And then we yield a tree with that tag and those branches. So expand all now has a different meaning. It means that we take in a sequence of tags, but also a start and an end point. And what we're going to do is divide up that start end span into smaller spans. Now, if there's only one tag, then we can just expand that tag from start to end and be done. But if there's multiple tags, then we split them up into the first and the rest, but we consider all middle points in between the start and the end. So that's a range that starts at start plus one, and it ends while the middle point needs to leave room for all of the words in rest. So each word, each tag in rest is going to be at least one word. So we can compute the number of spaces required to fill up the rest after the middle point as rest plus one minus the len of rest. OK, so then what do we do? The first branch is going to be expanding from the start to the middle. And the rest is going to expand from the middle to the end. So in that way, we divide up the span into the first branch and the rest of the branches. Then we put those together, and we yield the result. Now the last part we need to change is what happens at the end. Well, we want to expand the symbol s just like we did before, but we want to start at the very beginning of the sentence, and we want to end after the last word. Oops, that should be the end. Sorry about that. So the range goes from the start to the end. The middle has to be somewhere in between. OK, so let's see what we've got. We run parse.py, which gives us a parse function, where we can pass in buffalo, buffalo, buffalo. And we'll get a syntax tree with exactly those words as the leaves. Now, if we parse the word buffalo repeated four times, we get two different options. One is a syntax tree that says, beasts intimidate New York beasts. And the other one says, New York beasts intimidate beasts. These are the two different options that we looked at when we walked through the slides. What happens if we parse a sentence that's buffalo repeated five times in a row? Think about it for a second before I show you. In this case, we get three different sentence structures. Beasts intimidate. Beasts. That beasts intimidate. Or we have New York beasts intimidate New York beasts. Or we have a transitive interpretation that beasts that beasts that intimidate intimidate other beasts. And so the cycle of intimidation goes from generation of buffalo to generation of buffalo. If you have a sequence of 10 different buffalo, well then, you get a pretty significant variety of different sentence structures. Because you could have a very complicated compound subject or a very complicated compound object and some New Yorks sprinkled in the middle. 